The F5 is the highest possible tornado rating on both the Vegeta and Enhanced Vegeta scale, and as such, is the highest possible wind speeds conceivable on the planet. But how have these evolved over time? Well, the first F5 tornado ever was hundreds of years ago and struck near the town of Wojak, Germany in 1764. This tornado was before we had cameras, but we do know it displayed unbelievable power. For instance, it threw two children into a lake, and a small tsunami in that lake had been created due to the intense winds. Homes were destroyed as well, including a 30-foot mansion that essentially disappeared after it was shredded by the winds. The official rating was a T11, which is actually using the Toro scale, but this rating directly equates to an F5 tornado. This event was only a precursor to future F5s though, with the next two happening in the 1800 and 1845 in the towns of Hainchen, Germany and Montville, France. Both of these tornadoes produced extensive damage to homes. The Montville tornado was powerful enough to throw debris as far as 23.5 miles away, and it induced a death toll of 75 fatalities. Still, these early F5s were poorly documented, but the information on these events would become much more detailed as time went on. Leading up to the 1950s, a few more international F5s would touch down, such as the 1876 Bowen, Australia tornado that completely wrecked the town's hospital. But really, it would be several decades later until the next F5 would impact in northern Italy. This was near the towns of Treviso and Aldine in 1930. This F5 would kill 23 people as it smashed apart a large solid stone monastery as well as many homes. Now as we enter into the 1950s, documentation now becomes a part of standard practice in the United States and accurate designated ratings are given to F5s. This is where things get bad, as the first US F5 occurred in Waco, Texas on May 11th, 1953. Waco is a huge city and many people in the area didn't take appropriate shelter due to this tornado being completely obscured by rain. This led to the deaths of 114 people as the tornado ravaged downtown. In one part of the city, a six-story furniture store collapsed, killing 30 people at once. While this was definitely an extremely significant tornado, it was only a little over two weeks later when the town of Fort Rice, North Dakota was struck by another F5. After leveling a church, the church pews were thrown with such power that they actually penetrated over four feet into the ground. Sounds intense, right? Well, in comparison, the next F5 tornado would be considered stuff of nightmares. In the town of Beecher, Michigan, the third F5 of the year would touch down. The residents had very little warning, with some only becoming aware of the tornado as the winds were already destroying their homes. Some people reported seeing strange fireballs within the tornado as it raced towards a drive-in theater, as if it was some supernatural power. As pandemonium caused everyone to panic and try to evacuate, many people crashed into each other's cars and others mistakenly drove into the tornado. After the tornado passed, 116 people were left dead. But yet, the onslaught continued as before the month had even passed, a fourth F5 struck near the town of Adair, Iowa. Heavy farm machinery was tossed hundreds of feet and boards of wood were actually thrown with so much power that they embedded themselves into the side of trees. The catastrophic year of 1953 ended with the Vicksburg, Mississippi tornado as its closing act. After crossing the Yazoo River, the vortex tore through the town wrecking the business district and destroying the city's electrical services. This led to intense fires that spread through the rubble following the tornado. In all, 38 people were killed. Finally, 1953 had its last tornado, but two years later, an infamous pair of F5s would strike Oklahoma and Kansas. During the night of May 25th, 1955, the east side of Blackwell, Oklahoma was hit by a large tornado, where it destroyed or swept away over 400 homes, along with 60 businesses and the local hospital, killing a total of 20 people. But the storm wasn't done yet, as only 30 minutes later, the same storm produced another tornado that roared through the town of Udall, Kansas. The town's water tower was toppled and many homes literally disintegrated as the 1,300 yard wide funnel passed over them. Many vehicles were thrown hundreds of yards and were mangled beyond recognition, and 80 people died in total. 
leaving the Udall F5 as the deadliest tornado in Kansas' history, even to this day. Despite the insane nature of this storm, this would not be the last time a pair of F5s would strike Kansas. But fortunately, the next year would only see a single F5, but this shouldn't distract from the tragedy that took place in the town of Hudsonville, Michigan. This tornado had enough power to scour the floor tiles from the foundations, which is a truly terrifying display of strength. For instance, floor tiles have absolutely no surface area to grab onto, which means the tornado would have had to purely suck up the tiles, which is insane. Debris was strewn and scattered across the ground in a phenomenon called windrowing before it obliterated a mobile home park. 17 people were believed to have been killed, which in comparison to other F5s, isn't even that bad. But 17 people is insane. Although a terrible lone event, the following would be more devastating overall though. On May 20th, 1957, the town of Ruskin Heights, Missouri, had entire residential blocks leveled by a 700 yard wide tornado, killing 44. Wind rowing occurred as homes had their sub flooring ripped away, leaving the basements and those sheltering underground completely exposed. Another display of the tornado's crazy power was shown when debris from the town was found as far as 165 miles away. A month later, the June 20th Fargo tornado would become North Dakota's deadliest tornado ever, killing 10 people. A hundred blocks of North Fargo experienced damage, with many homes in the Golden Ridge subdivision being swept away. This tornado is actually very infamous as it's one of the most well-documented at the time. For instance, it was documented enough for Ted Fujita, the person who made the Fujita scale, to use public media to illustrate the full life cycle of the tornado for the first time in history. Again, skipping forward to June 4th, 1958, the first official F5 tornado in the state of Wisconsin would strike the town of Colfax. In town, one car was twisted around the side of a small steel bridge before the bridge consequently collapsed. And after the tornado, one injured woman was found with a stick driven into her skull. If that destruction sounds pretty intense, the next F5 in two years time would showcase an even greater feat of damage. The white barrel shaped tornado wrecked the town of Prague, Oklahoma, completely destroying over a hundred homes and killing five people. But if that wasn't extreme enough, a very expensive oil refinery was critically damaged causing $750,000 in damage at this location alone. Continuing the trend of very expensive F5 tornadoes, the next would strike Wichita Falls, Kansas on April 3rd, 1964, as 225 homes were destroyed, as well as several structures at the Shepard Air Force Base, killing eight people. An interesting fact about this tornado is that it also holds the title of being the first tornado to be captured on live television. Which, by the way, this would not be the only F5 to be recorded on live television. Just over a month later, on May 5th, the second F5 of the year struck southeast Nebraska. Many farmsteads near Bradshaw were completely destroyed, including one where two people were killed. This tornado is actually Nebraska's only recorded F5 tornado. Another state's only tornado occurred nearly exactly one year later when an F5 touched down near the town of Colomb. This time, it was South Dakota's only rated F5 tornado, destroying seven farmsteads and wiping three away at F5 intensity. Unfortunately, a couple years later in 1966, it was an increasingly devastating year for tornadoes, especially for the residents of Jackson, Mississippi, where the largest city in the state saw an F5 rip through its suburbs. The tornado toppled a 1900-foot broadcaster before entering populated areas of the city, notably the Candlestick Park Shopping Center, where all but one wall was left standing, killing 12 people in this location alone. The winds within the tornado at this time were so strong that pieces of pavement were literally scoured away. Seeing the unfathomable power of this tornado, it doesn't come as much of a surprise that 58 people were left dead in its wake. But this year wasn't done with dramatic tornadoes yet, because as spring turned to summer, the town of Topeka, Kansas would be the next victim of an F5 tornado. News reporter Bill Curtis urged viewers to protect themselves, saying, for God's sake, take cover, an extremely infamous moment on television. If you live in the north part or on the northern edge, for God's sake, take cover. As the tornado neared town, radio broadcaster Rick Douglas was dragged out from under an overpass he wrongly assumed would provide shelter, and he was flung through the air 
having his clothes ripped from his body. He was found shortly afterwards and was rushed to the hospital. His appearance was so dire that for a second law enforcement thought he was dead. But after his recovery, Douglas continued to find shards of debris in his skin later. But this tornado isn't done, as a six block wide path was cut through residential areas as well, with dozens of homes being swept from their foundations. The Philip Ballard Municipal Airport was also struck, with several aircraft being tossed. One of the only rare incidents where aircrafts were significantly damaged by tornadoes. In all, 16 people died, a surprisingly low amount for the extent of the damage. One of the reasons the death toll was so low was probably due to Curtis's urgent message. 1968, much like 1966, had relentless sequences of tornadoes. The town of Wheelersburg, Ohio was struck by an F5 on April 23rd, 1968, the first of four F5s that year. A freight train was struck in town, with the tornado having enough force to throw a train car over 100 feet, as well as destroy or damage over 550 homes causing the deaths of seven in these homes. The second F5 of the year caused similar devastation to the town of Charles City, Iowa on May 15th. Intense cyclodial marks were noted as 372 homes were flattened and 1,250 vehicles were completely totaled. But it wasn't even an hour later when another F5 would also hit Iowa, this time hitting the town of Olween and Maynard. The tornado sirens only sounded for 15 seconds before power was completely cut to Olween, which was then struck at full force, having schools, businesses, and homes razed to the ground. The last F5 tornado of that year struck Tracy, Minnesota on June 13th. This bright, white trunk-shaped tornado scoured the ground as it swept homes off their foundations and threw boxcars over 300 yards, sadly killing nine people, but mercifully bringing an end to the chaos that year. This reprieve wouldn't last long, however, as on May 11th, 1970, Lubbock, Texas, felt the wrath of a higher end F5 after dark. At 9.35 p.m., the tornado touched down and began to carve its path through town. A quarter of the city experienced damage as the 1.5 mile wide behemoth impacted town. A steel tank weighing 37,000 pounds was displaced 2,700 feet from its original location, which is just insane and many high-rise buildings had windows blown out and walls cracked by the outer portions of the tornado, which is extreme F5 damage. Many homes were swept away north of 4th Street near the Lubbock Country Club before 119 aircraft were damaged or destroyed at the Lubbock Airport. In all, 26 people were killed. Even though this tornado hit a major city, its death toll would pale in comparison to the tornado that would occur the next year. On February 21st, a long track F5 decimated several communities in Louisiana and Mississippi after destroying several rural homes near the town of Waverly at F5 intensity. The tornado entered the small community of Joe's Bayou, killing 10 people and a family of 12. The tornado then crossed into Mississippi, inflicting damage to several towns before entering Inverness were destroyed up to 90% of the town. After the tornado dissipated, 47 people were left dead, nearly doubling the death toll from the 1970 Lubbock F5. Now we get to travel abroad again, this time to the Southern Hemisphere, where the city of San Justo, Argentina, was struck by an F5 tornado on January 10th, 1973. Multiple factories were shredded and several homes were leveled. Cars were thrown hundreds of yards like ping pong balls with one car being found embedded in a concrete wall. Some eyewitnesses reported the ground shaking as if a jet aircraft was passing overhead. 63 people were killed by this tornado, which was probably attributed to the fact that it hit a very poor area in Argentina. But meanwhile, back in the United States, another F5 would strike Texas. This F5 actually had fairly limited damage as it only impacted two barns near Valley Mills, sweeping them away and only leaving a piece of tin as a clue that they had ever existed. But this event pales in comparison to devastation that would occur the next year. The following year likely saw one of, if not the most catastrophic tornado events in recorded history. The 1974 super outbreak occurred, producing seven F5 tornadoes as they touched down in one day across five different states. The first F5 to touch down was the Deep Hall, Indiana tornado. Numerous farms were leveled and the Morgan Elementary School had its roof and four classrooms destroyed. Fortunately, no one was killed though, 
but in Martinsburg, all but 10 buildings were destroyed. And at Daisy Hill, more homes were swept at F5 intensity. Overall, six people were killed, but this was only a taste of what was to come. And soon, the next F5 tornado touched down just west of Xenia, Ohio. This tornado is probably one of the worst tornadoes to ever impact a town, ever. The tornado slashed through the Windsor Park and Arrowhead subdivisions at high-end F5 intensity, causing extreme wind rowing. In downtown, Xenia High School was wrecked and the business district suffered major damage. 36 people were killed in Xenia, making it the deadliest tornado of the outbreak. Following the Xenia tornado, the next F5 tornado occurred in Bradenburg, Kentucky. After inflicting severe damage to several rural homes and communities, the tornado barreled into Bradenburg at F5 intensity. Numerous, really well-constructed homes were swept completely away, and downtown was devastated, with 18 people dying on Green Street alone. The damage inflicted here may have been the worst damage inflicted in the entire outbreak. After the tornado passed, 31 people were left dead. But still, the outbreak continued as F5 number 4 struck Sailor Park, Ohio. Several homes initially were hit at F4 intensity, but then the tornado crossed the Ohio River. The Moorhead Marina was the first region struck in Sailor Park. A large floating restaurant barge was lifted and flipped as a nearby house was lifted from its foundation and was thrown into the river. Several other homes were reduced to slabs before the tornado continued onwards, inflicting more damage to several Cincinnati neighborhoods before lifting. Three people died during this tornado. The fifth and sixth F5 tornadoes were particularly tragic, as they both hit the town of Tanner, Alabama within minutes of each other. The first tornado swept away rural homes, killing a family of six before crossing the Tennessee River and crashing into Tanner, where it shredded homes and a trailer park killing 28 people. As rescue operations began to go underway, a second F5 tornado formed and struck Tanner again. The tornado crossed into Tennessee where it killed two people attending service at a church. And then after both tornadoes had passed, the death toll was 44. But there was still one more. The last F5 that occurred struck Gwen, Alabama. Right as it formed, the Monterey trailer park was badly damaged before the tornado intensified and struck Gwen at F5 intensity. The damage here was perhaps some of the worst ever documented, with homes being completely swept away and some foundations literally being dislodged and even removed from the ground. The Gwen Mobile Home Plant was partially pushed off its foundation, with the rest of the structure being mangled beyond recognition. The tornado moved on, inflicting more severe damage until it dissipated, leaving 28 people dead. 1975 would produce a short rest after the catastrophe of the 1974 outbreak. But the next year, we would see the return of the F5. On March 26th, the town of Spiral, Oklahoma would be terrorized as a tornado barged in from the southwest. 70-ton railroad cars were rolled, and the town's railroad track was bent before the tornado crossed into State Highway 9. Here, it peeled off asphalt from the road and flattened homes along it at F5 intensity, killing two people just here. On April 19th, a particularly miraculous case would occur near Brownwood, Texas. An F5 tornado just narrowly avoided the town. The tornado bore down on a farmstead and a group of teenagers north of the town. The farm was wrecked as the group was caught out in the open, reportedly throwing them up to a thousand yards. But by some miracle, every single person in the group survived. Jordan, Iowa experienced the last F5 of the year on June 13th. The tornado quickly grew to a mile wide as several smaller tornadoes called satellite tornadoes orbited around it. The tornado entered Jordan and destroyed nearly every building. Farm machinery was noted to have been thrown hundreds of yards. Ted Fujita, the man who had investigated the Fargo tornado before, commented that it was one of the most intense tornadoes he had ever surveyed. The next few years saw a couple of F5 tornadoes, with the most notable being the F5 that struck Birmingham, Alabama on April 4th, 1977. Smithville Estate subdivision was impacted at F5 intensity, where entire rows of homes were annihilated. Hillside homes had their basement walls ripped out of the ground before the tornado caused more severe damage in Tarrant before lifting in Huffman. A total of 22 people were killed by this tornado, 
and it wasn't until June 18th, 1984, when the next notable F5 would occur. This next tornado was quite strange, as it struck the early hours of the morning, which is a very unconventional time for a powerful F5 to form. The tornado tore through Barnefeld, Wisconsin, whilst many residents were fast asleep. Due to the town having no tornado siren to alert its residents to the danger approaching the town, 93 homes and 17 of the 18 businesses in the town were caught without guard and destroyed, resulting in the deaths of nine people. The following year would continue the trend of strange F5 cases. This time, it was the furthest east F5 ever recorded. Occurring on May 31st, 1985, the towns of Niles, Ohio and Wheatland, Pennsylvania would soon feel the wrath of the tornado as it touched down and quickly struck Newton Falls, damaging 400 homes. Continuing east, the tornado inflicted F5 damage to the northern portions of Niles sweeping many homes off their foundations before the Niles Park Plaza shopping center was leveled and partially swept away at F5 intensity. Several 30-foot, 75,000-pound petroleum tanks were tossed and bounced as the tornado continued east, where it entered Pennsylvania and struck Wheatland at F5 intensity again. A trucking plant was partially swept as sections of pavement in the parking lot were scoured away, something we've barely ever seen before from a tornado. The tornado then damaged the town's airport before weakening and dissipating, leaving 18 dead. Luckily, it was five more years until another F5 would occur, but unfortunately, it was one of the craziest ones to occur. In Kansas, on March 13th, 1990, two F5s formed consecutively from a single storm, bearing a striking similarity to the Blackwell Udall tornadoes from earlier. The first F5 tornado touched down near Pretty Prairie and quickly grew, destroying several rural homesteads. The tornado narrowed into a barrel shape as it entered the town of Heston, where it destroyed 226 homes, with many homes swept away in an F5 fashion, leaving only exposed, empty basements. Several industrial structures were also obliterated. As the tornado exited the east side of town, a tornado handoff occurred where a new vortex formed and gained power from the same storm at the same time. As the Heston F5 absorbed into its own circulation, the new tornado touched down and rapidly intensified east of Heston. It headed toward the towns of Gosel. Several homes nearby were swept away with debris scattered in cyclodial scour marks. Surveys noted the damage as extreme F5 in this area. The tornado continued until it finally dissipated near the town of Riley. You must be thinking that this bizarre sequence of unconventional F5s must be over by now, right? Well, Mother Nature still has one more trick to play, as later on that year, another highly unusual F5 would strike the town of Plainfield, Illinois. On August 28th, Forecasters hadn't anticipated any tornadoes, but in the afternoon, a surprise tornado was produced. The tornado moved southeast, a very unconventional direction for most tornadoes to move, and was completely hidden by rain, disguising itself as it creeped slowly towards Plainfield. After inflicting sporadic damage, the tornado rapidly intensified just northwest of town. Several inches of soil was scoured, and a 20-ton tractor was thrown over half a mile, killing the driver. As the tornado entered the town, Plainfield High School was struck and suffered severe damage, killing three before the tornado damaged or destroyed 55 homes within town. Multiple of these homes were swept away violently at F5 intensity. The tornado then inflicted more severe damage in Crystal Lawns and Crest Hill as it neared the city of Joliet before the tornado dissipated leaving 29 people dead. The next F5 struck Andover, Kansas, and it's a pretty famous one, happening in 1991. This tornado was one of many tornadoes on this day, but this was by far the most devastating tornado of that outbreak. The tornado quickly formed and inflicted major damage to the McConnell Air Force Base, narrowly missing a line of B-10 bombers, two of which were equipped with nuclear warheads. To the east, the sirens in Andover actually failed, forcing police officers to drive around the town and the Golden Spur Mobile Home Park to manually warn residents of the impending danger. 10 minutes later, Andover and the Mobile Home Park was impacted at F5 intensity. 85% of the structures in the Mobile Home Park were obliterated, but fortunately, very few fatalities occurred due to the warnings given manually by the police officers. 
the tornado exited the city limits and quickly weakened before dissipating near El Dorado. In total, 17 people were killed. But continuing the trend of consecutive F5 tornado years, Chandler, Minnesota would be the next town to be devastated on June 16th. The tornado reached a maximum intensity just as it came over a hill overlooking Chandler before slamming into town. 75 homes were blown down and several structures were swept, whilst vehicles were tossed hundreds of yards. The tornado dissipated after traveling for 35 miles. And depending on how you look at it, it fortunately only killed one person in its 35 mile path. It was another four years until on July 18th, 1996, a large cone F5 tornado would touch down near Oakfield, Wisconsin. Four homes were swept away, with rebar supports on one home being bent sideways at a 90 degree angle, which is just incredibly violent. Despite the damage, no deaths are recorded, but this story can't be said for the next tornado. As many of you have heard of it before, as on May 27th, 1997, the residents of Gerald, Texas saw one of the worst tornadoes of all time. Most weren't expecting to see any tornadoes, but as storms moved southwest towards them, a sequence of progressively stronger tornadoes formed. Soon, a thin tornado touched down and slowly meandered towards Double Creek Estates in northwest Gerald. The tornado quickly reorganized into a wide, violent tornado and became pseudo-stationary over the estate at basically a forward motion of zero miles per hour. The homes there were ravaged by F5 winds for up to three minutes, exasperating the destruction. By the time the tornado had moved on, almost nothing remained for the houses. Debris was turned to pulp and virtually disappeared, with only foundation slabs to give any clue that a neighborhood might have been there. In the core of the tornado, the survival rate was 0%, meaning it was unsurvivable unless those in the path took shelter underground, which there wasn't much of in the flat areas of Texas. Overall, 27 people were killed, and what the winds did to the people impacted is best left to the imagination. Following the Gerald tornado, another F5 struck the city of Birmingham, Alabama on April 8, 1998. Although severe damage occurred along its track, the worst F5 damage occurred to the Oak Grove, Rock Creek, and McDonald Chapel areas. The Oak Grove High School, elementary school, and local fire station sustained major damage before the tornado swept away homes in Rock Creek at F5 intensity. Several cars were thrown into a 50-foot deep ravine before the tornado continued on to sweep away more homes in Edgewater and McDonald Chapel. 32 fatalities were caused by this tornado. A lesser known tornado would occur just over a week later on April 16, 1998. Although no towns were directly impacted, Several homes were swept away in rural areas of Lawrence County, Tennessee, designating this tornado as Tennessee's only F5 ever. A 200-foot section of grass was also scoured, leaving bare soil in its wake. This tornado is actually sometimes referred to as the Forgotten F5, perhaps in part due to the tornado that would occur the following year, where potentially the most powerful tornado ever recorded would strike central Oklahoma. During the evening of May 3rd, 1999, a tornado touched down near Amber before intensifying into an extremely powerful F5 tornado. The community of Bridge Creek Estates was impacted as the tornado reached its maximum intensity. There was a short range mobile Doppler radar on wheels that was next to it, recording winds inside the tornado, noticing up to 301 mile per hour winds. Homes in Bridge Creek virtually vanished as nearby trees had their bark shredded and torn away. Vehicles were sandblasted and compressed into small heaps of scrap metal. Grass was scoured away, exposing red Oklahoma clay underneath, turning the landscape into something akin to the surface of Mars. The tornado then tightened into a violent tube as it impacted an overpass on I-44, causing gruesome injuries to those who falsely assumed the bridge would give them shelter. The tornado briefly weakened as it crossed the Canadian River, before intensifying again as it entered Moore, a suburb of Oklahoma City, Country Place Estates, Greenbrier East Lakes Estates, and Emerald Springs Apartments were all destroyed at or near F5 intensity, obliterating several blocks of homes. The tornado continued across I-35 before continuing north, narrowly avoiding Tinker Air Force Base before it finally dissipated. In all, 36 people were killed by this extreme F5, 
and this would not be the first time an extreme F5 would hit the exact same area. However, during the early mid-2000s, researchers and engineers worked on an updated version of the F scale, introducing the EF scale. This scale stands for Enhanced Fujita Scale, and it used a more sophisticated catalog of damage types and a more accurate wind scale to help rate tornadoes more accurately. This new scale is considered much more strict than the original F scale lending even more prestige to the unfathomable power of the tornadoes that would subsequently be rated in EF5. The first EF5 ever to be rated using the new scale touched down after dark on May 4th, 2007. This tornado is also very infamous. It rapidly grew into a massive 1.7 mile wide vortex as it tracked north to northeast. The tornado initially appeared as if it would pass east of the small town of Greensburg, Kansas, but just at the wrong moment, the tornado turned more north and west, causing the town to be enveloped by the EF5. The strange sudden north movement is due to something called a tornado occlusion, where the spinning portion of the storm that produces the tornado gets absorbed into itself. The tornado, wider than the town itself, destroyed 95% of all structures. A tank car containing 14,000 gallons of ammonia was thrown, releasing the toxic substance into the environment. Fire hydrants were ripped from the ground as several well-anchored homes were swept away, with the nearby Greensburg Elementary School and High School also being severely damaged. Despite the vast damage in the time of day the tornado struck, a relatively low death toll of 11 is attributed to this EF5 possibly because Kansas is known for tornadoes. Now across the border in Canada, the original F scale was still used, and on June 22nd, a tall, thin, but incredibly violent tornado would earn the last F5 rating ever in the world. In Eli, Manitoba, a tornado touched down and made many sharp turns and loops as it moved across fairly rural areas. First, it flipped the trailer of a semi-truck before it impacted the town's flour mill. For some reason, this tornado literally did a circle around the flour mill, but luckily, extreme damage wasn't caused. In fact, the tornado looked pretty weak. The tornado then slowly meandered onto Ellie Street, shrinking in size and increasing its angular momentum. At this exact spot, F5 intensity occurred as it lifted an entire house into the air and shattered it into thousands of pieces. The tornado then turned southwest, before dissipating moments later. Luckily, no one was killed by this tornado, but many people didn't believe that it was actually an F5. However, whether it was an F5 or not doesn't change the rating, but this wasn't the same story for the EF5 that occurred on May 25th, 2008, as a large wedge-shaped tornado began to carve a path towards the town of Parkersburg, Iowa. Just like other tornadoes, cyclodial patterns were created in fields west of the town before the tornado struck. Many homes in a church were swept away in an obvious EF5 manner, as the high school and two banks were also destroyed. At one home, a basement wall was pushed over, and the basement floor was cracked. Several people sheltering in basements were killed as the tornado passed over. The tornado exited the town, heading east, tracking through rural farmland and destroying several farmsteads, before impacting the town of New Hartford at EF5 intensity. One home had its basement's contents sucked out, simultaneously killing the owner. The tornado then moved back into rural areas where it weakened and dissipated. Overall, nine people were left dead by the tornado. It was now three years later until the next EF5 year would occur, and we finally reached the 2010s. But unfortunately, this year would perhaps be the most ferocious yet, with 2011 being considered as perhaps the worst tornado year on record. For context, Six EF5s struck the states in less than a month, with four of those tornadoes occurring on one single day. Presenting a competitor to the April 3rd, 1974 outbreak as the most devastating and tragic tornado day occurred in recorded history. The April 27th, 2011 super outbreak. The first of the four EF5s struck near the town of Philadelphia, Mississippi. The tornado first formed just north of town before rapidly intensifying to the northwest. The wispy multi-vortex tornado swept a brick home away before it produced some of the worst ground scouring ever observed. Two feet of soil was gouged out of the ground, indicating extremely low pressure in EF5 winds near the surface. 
Several more rural homes were destroyed along its track before the tornado dissipated, leaving three dead in its wake. It wasn't long until the next EF5 tornado touched down in northwest Alabama, again same day, where it quickly intensified north of Hamilton before destroying the town of Hackleburg. This tornado would be one of the most violent and intense tornadoes ever recorded. Well-built homes were swept, with debris being windrowed. The Wrangler gene plant was nearly entirely leveled as the tornado exited the town, and it left the community 85% destroyed. But the tornado wasn't done. The tornado now headed squarely into the south portion of the town of Phil Campbell. Several more well-built homes were swept away and 25 feet of pavement was stripped from a road. The tornado continued northeast, inflicting more EF5 damage to several more rural communities before crossing the Tennessee River. The Browns Ferry nuclear power plant narrowly avoided severe damage as the tornado moved towards the communities of Tanner, Harvest, and Tony. Near EF5 damage was inflicted to several large homes before the tornado finally began to weaken and dissipate. Because of the intensity and extremely long track, the tornado left 72 people dead across several different towns. While this EF5 was ongoing, another storm just to the west produced a tornado that touched down just west of the town of Smithville, Mississippi. And again, one of the worst tornadoes ever recorded occurred. Within seconds of touching down, the tornado had likely already gained EF5 intensity. At least a foot of soil was stripped from a field as it entered the town. An SUV was lofted over 1,300 yards, impacting the town's water tower as modern, well-constructed homes disappeared. Debris was pulverized into powder, and trees were turned to mulch as the tornado raced northeast at 60 miles per hour. The damage in Smithville is considered among some of the worst ever documented. Vast swaths of trees were blown down east of town before the tornado weakened as it crossed the Mississippi-Alabama border. However, the tornado then re-intensified, destroying more homes before weakening for a final time and dissipating. The Smithville tornado had killed 23 by the time it dissipated. The final EF5 of the outbreak touched down southwest of Rainsville, Alabama. This tornado was super weird, and it moved quickly into Rainsville, inflicting severe damage to many of the town's homes. It also caused extreme wind rowing as homes were leveled. Half a mile northeast of town, EF5 damage was inflicted to a home, with parts of the driveway being ripped away, whilst an 800-pound safe was thrown 200 yards. Parts of a storm shelter were ripped away as it was slightly heaved up out of the ground. This actually exposed the people sheltering inside to flying debris. Violent damage continued to be inflicted to trees in rural neighborhoods as the tornado moved near Sylvania and Hennigar but soon the tornado weakened and dissipated. Although the April 27th outbreak had concluded, this year had not finished its onslaught of EF5s, as on May 22nd, 2011, Joplin, Missouri experienced the worst damaging tornado in recorded history, as a mile-wide tornado carved a path of utter destruction through the center of the town. This tornado event would be one of the most known tornado events of all time. The tornado touched down just west of Joplin, and in just nine seconds, it instantly became a wedge tornado, gaining strength quickly as it entered the western suburbs. News stations at the time had no idea that a tornado was going until it was already causing EF5 damage to several homes and businesses, and the worst damage occurred in a swath near the St. John's Hospital. Nearly all the hospital's windows were blown out as debris wounded many patients. Combined with the loss of power, this ultimately resulted in five fatalities. A helicopter on the roof of the hospital was thrown hundreds of feet to the floor, where it was destroyed as nearby parking curbs were shifted. Thousands of homes continued to be destroyed in a violent manner, with the tornado peaking in intensity near the Joplin High School. Here, schools and several homes were impacted at EF5 strength. Many businesses on 20th Street, a main street of the city, were blown down at EF5 intensity as well before the tornado swerved southeast, finally exiting Joplin. The tornado had killed 158 people, making it the deadliest tornado in the USA since 1947. The tornado also inflicted $2.8 billion in damage, making it the costliest tornado in recorded history. This catastrophic year finally was able to end, but not without one more EF5 near Piedmont, Oklahoma. The tornado initially touched down southwest of El Reno, 
where it rapidly intensified as it crossed I-40. Calumet Industries was struck head on, where the industrial plant, along with the accompanying heavy machinery, was horrifically mangled and set alight. A nearby shelter was cracked in two as the tornado then impacted a cactus oil rig. The anchored rig, weighing two million pounds, was rolled over by the EF5 winds, as the tornado created enormous cyclodial marks in the nearby wheat fields. The tornado continued to the northeast and impacted several more communities, including Piedmont, at near EF5 intensity. This continued until the tornado thankfully weakened and dissipated near Guthrie, having killed nine people. The fact this tornado was able to loft a two million pound oil rig makes it one of the most intense tornado damages ever recorded. Unfortunately, the next one is even worse. The May 20th, 2013 Moore EF5 is the most recent EF5 as of this video's creation. This tornado nearly decimated the same track as the 1999 Moore F5 as it impacted the southern Oklahoma City suburb. Briarwood Elementary School was hit and destroyed at what was thought to be EF5 intensity, but they looked into it more and decided to downgrade it to EF4. By some incredible miracle, all teachers and students at Briarwood survived, but this couldn't be the same for further down. The tornado continued through large swaths of residential blocks and they were leveled at EF5 intensity. Then the tornado did its most tragic thing yet, as it impacted the school of Plaza Towers Elementary. Seven children, mostly kindergartners, were pinned underneath the rubble and were either drowned or suffocated to death and died. After it moved over this tragic area, the tornado briefly made a looping track, sweeping away more homes at EF5 strength before impacting the Moore Medical Center. The tornado then moved due east, leveling and sweeping several more homes until the tornado finally exited more, weakened and dissipated near Lake Draper. This would be the last F5 or EF5 to ever impact the United States. While many people think more have occurred, it's impossible to tell for certain. What we do know is that all of these EF5s and F5s cause significant damage to people and their livelihoods, and it's a good thing that one hasn't happened since.